Kitten. Oh, and then, what's the name for me? <laughs> yeah, so you gotta start as a kitten to get the nest on the harness. Well, they won't. Right. We are live on YouTube, guys. So, so don't work. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, it's twelve oh one, and so we have a lot to do in a small amount of time. So I think we're gonna get started. Is anyone online or no? It's just you. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Well, that will make things easier, hopefully. Um, but welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Murphy, Long Range Planner for the UG's uh, Planning and Urban Design Department. Um, just for a show of hands, how many people were at the first pizza I'm planning to Okay, well, that's great. <laughs> we have a lot of new people, so welcome. Um, before we go around and do introductions, um, I just kind of catch you up on what these are. So um, we're doing a citywide comprehensive planning process in addition to a lot of other plans, historic preservation, economic development, and housing. And we've decided that we're basically, these are meetings that we just had internally with staff and we're making them open to the public because we wanna be able to be transparent with you. We wanna be able to communicate with you and work with you on this process together. Um, so that's kind of what these are, um, and I'll just go around, Jim, if you want to introduce yourself, just say your name and maybe what neighborhood you're from. Uh, I'm Schrader, I'm from the Historic West Side neighborhood, but I'm also representing downtown. Jeff Brownlee, I'm from the Presidential Highfields neighborhood. I'm Kayla Hauer, I'm with the Livable Neighborhoods Program here at the UG, and I'm with White Oaks Neighborhood. I'm Nisha Chappelle, I'm also with Livable Neighborhoods, and I live in the Cathedral neighborhood. Jersey, uh, Cerise Hall, Jersey South. I'm Tommy Princess from Iris downtown. Randy Grees, short reservations from UG on the Rosedale. Jane the Hunter, historic West Height neighborhood. Stephon King, Strawberry Hill. Naomi King, Strawberry Hill. Sarah Schaefer, Legends neighborhood and representing Public Works. I'm Alex Phillips and I'm with Project Eagle. Uh, Dwayne Bright, UG Housing Coordinator. Sheldon Harris live over in the Brentwood neighborhood. Great. Right. And in the back, I have Rochelle Donald with the mayor's office. Okay. Three. Ashley Hand, Director of Strategic Communications and Conference. All right. Crystal McBenners, I'm in UG Communications and I'm in the hyper area. Great. Ashley Donald. Ashley Scott, in planning in urban design. What neighborhood? I'm sorry, neighborhood. I'm newly just moved over Sunday. All right. <laughs> We're going to get you the policy. We're going to get a rain check on yeah. that one. <laughs> Jason. Oh, it's not Jason Fowler. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, Jason Faust, uh, also planning urban design. And I cannot remember the name of my neighborhood for, for the moment. I'll look uh, it up for you sometime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you know it every time until someone asks. And they're like, ah, that one. <laughs> All right, well, welcome. Um, there's a couple seats over here, and otherwise you can spread out wherever. Pizza is forthcoming, um, so we'll take a break for that. But um, essentially, um, we have some items that we have to go through internally, but we have some things that we also want your feedback with. So this will be um, talking about our previous meeting. We just had our first neighborhood roundtable for the comprehensive plan this past Saturday. Um, it was about demystifying resiliency, which essentially means how do we get from where we are to building a thriving community. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit and then ask for some um, of your help um, in looking at the community feedback we got there um, and then um, see what kind of additions you might have. So um, I guess just to give, does anyone attend the meeting on Saturday here? Couple people. Okay. Yeah. So those of you who didn't, um, essentially, we were trying to kick off the citywide comprehensive plan. Um, we introduced what it is. Um, we asked everyone to give a shared value. Mia led a really great exercise, um, and we're going to look at what those shared values were and try to figure out if there's some overarching themes that we can pull and start to weave in into this planning process. 
Um, we had uh, different staff members talk about projects relating to resiliency and how they're working on building a thriving community. Um, we had Groundwork NRG there talking about um, their green team's project with the um, Jersey Creek Trail. Um, what else am I forgetting? <laughs> I think that was relatively it, but we had a lot of engagement opportunities to talk to the community members. I think we had about like 40, 42, 42 people who showed up um, because we really wanted to start with this with getting all on the same page and identifying those shared values. Um, so that being said, we would actually like your assistance in figuring out what these themes were. So, um, Mina, do you want to just explain what your hashtag exercise was? And I'll pass you that in the meantime. Sure. <laughs> um, so I led a little, <clears throat> excuse me, I led a little activity where we outlined kind of what are some things that we want to see in the comprehensive plan. I asked them to keep it really short and sweet. So we did a hashtag of four words that outlined what are some things that they want to see or envision in a thriving community that we're going to build in our comprehensive plan? There was some really good um, feedback, such as stuff about more interaction with community policing or cleaner streets, transportation, um, issues surrounding food insecurity and health. They really get so many things, and we divide them into four different themes or topics. Um, off the top of my head, there was sustainability, there was health and safety, health and safety. over the other two. I have them on my phone, actually. So we, oh. we're actually going to be redoing that. So one of the things that we're also trying to work with and where your feedback is important is um, how to most effectively um, you know, get community feedback and engage as many people as possible, but then how we utilize that in the planning process to make sure that we're being true to the community's desires. So um, even though we had buckets initially for that, I think what we're going to do now is, is go back and look at all of the feedback and decide what the major themes are there. So instead of having buckets and then trying to fit in what everyone was saying into like, oh, well, we'll try to squeeze this into this theme, we're gonna look at everything that we have and figure out what are the themes that bubble to the top so that we're letting the community guide what those themes are. And, and I might add, I don't think that this necessarily is comprehensive, right? You may find that there's a missing hashtag, right? Something that you care about that you don't see on the board. That's okay, we can bring new ideas forward. This is not a complete process by any means. So if there's something that we see that's glaringly omitted, we wanna make sure that we're capturing it today too. Yeah, so, okay. I, this is all gonna be a lot of like improv and flying by the seat of our pants kind of thing because we've never done this before. So excuse all of the awkwardness, right? But we're trying to bring you into the fold and this is all gonna be a learning process and hopefully we'll get better at it. But what I wanted to do and what Ashley was saying is we're gonna look at what the other residents said. And I think what we'll do is each row, so these two tables will all work together. And then those two tables, those two tables, those two tables, and then you in the back, if you could. I handed you out, handed out some of the, the feedback that we got, some of these hashtags. And so what I'd like us to do is to be able to look at them all in our groups and figure out what some of the themes are so we can start to get an idea what the residents want. And then we'll talk about what's missing and what you, you know, what resonates with you, what you think should be added. And then that way it'll help guide us when we do more engagement and how we think about what we need to address in the community. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So maybe let's take, let's take five, seven minutes and just look at the, everyone, there should be one person I handed stickies to, but work in your rows and let's try to pick out the themes. You might have to get up to be able to work together a little better. I'll make some in the middle. I think maybe if we spread them all out. No more yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, there's another one that says no more trans. <laughs> I guess, like, you know, <laughs> this one says better. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this one says respect diversity. 
plan's going to get put up on the shelf somewhere in City Hall, like so many others have. Uh, uh, then that turn, a lot of us have been here. Yeah. Yeah. Any feedback, comments from a larger group about those themes? Um, let's what go. was the third one again? I'm sorry. It was, uh, expectations, community. What was the third? Needs. Needs. Okay. Uh, can this group go so on? we had three major groups: uh, services, uh, transparent land bank processes, reliable services. We had community, vibrant community, urban neighborhoods. And then landscape, open spaces, vibrant green spaces, good sidewalks everywhere, and mobility. And then we had some of the uh, any of those groups. Okay. Something for everyone. <laughs> okay. All right, over there. Uh, we had four categories. We said environment slash think green. Okay. And then we had use for the second one. The third one we had education. Yep. Okay. And then the fourth one we had thriving relationships. And what were a couple of the examples of specific hashtags in those categories? So in environment, we had clean and enjoyable outdoors and no more trash. In youth, we had school first. In education and left over, we had school first. And then thriving relations, we had thriving as neighbors, better police relationships, and respect diversity. Okay. Uh, Jim, do you want to do next? Yeah. Uh, we had, I guess, four areas. One was youth, one was um, violence free, I'll, call, I'll say. Um, one was helping. And one was, um, we didn't know how to have a good name for it. One of the hashtags was resiliency, which is kind of redundant, but I can give examples. Of the youth, it was you know, engagement and communication. Um, the violence free was paired with be kind. It was, it was you know, be, your, be a good neighbor, I guess. Um, the, the help was affordable, sustainable, accessible care and offer help as needed. And then we had the outliers, and that's why we just promoted resiliency. It was resiliency and integrity and clean up the trash. Yeah, group in the back. Uh, basically, it came down to uh, three categories of uh, uh, infrastructure, equity and finance, and uh, neighborhood experience. Okay. You said equity and finance. Mm -hmm. And what was the last one? Neighborhood experience. Okay, is that similar to community? What, what were kind of the examples for it is. So once at QA group were um, beautiful historic neighborhoods, know your neighbors, 
and diverse experiences unfold. Kind of, you know, whatever unique characteristics for a particular neighborhood and their accent. You know. Okay. Um, so hearing all of that feedback from the community members that came on Saturday, is there anything that's missing? Can I take a suggestion? Can we break for food? Yeah. yeah. And then come back because I think I have an idea on pivoting a little sure. bit on this based on what I've heard from everybody. With that, because we are literally making the sausage with you, so we appreciate your flexibility with us. Yeah, let's Is go get food. Yeah, I'm mean, cutting the pizza. Yeah, that's right. I'm cutting the pizza for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That might help you. Yeah. 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 I <laughs> Uh, yes. There's a guard. 
into kind of something approachable, accessible, um, informative, right? We want to know what we mean from the minute we say it. So that was part of this exercise of getting our values into a hashtag, four words, right? What's important to you as a community member? So we have, we have a bunch of kind of themes. What I want us to do is be able to get from these four word hashtags to kind of values. And it doesn't have to be a word. A word is always really nice, but sometimes we have to shoehorn things in to make it work. So it doesn't have to be a word. But I wanted to show you some of the examples of resiliency values, which could serve as comprehensive plan values as well. There's no reason to be limited to it, but just to give you a sense of the type of terminology that people are using when it comes to values statements, right? So sustainability, proactivity, um, flexibility, proximity, for that come up quite a bit. Um, holistic approach, that was a big theme in the resiliency conversation at the round table. Co-responsibility, it isn't just the UG, it's all of us. It's everybody's responsibility, whether you're doing business in Kansas City, Kansas, whether you're bringing your not-for-profit here, whether you're moving your family here, or you live here already. Um, so that co-responsibility, ongoing learning, creativity, security, and creating co-benefits. So if you can imagine, you know, we heard a lot of ideas here, and I think what I'd like to do is take it from, these are, the, these are topics, we've lumped everything together to what's the value statement that's really coming out of here. So for example, we heard a lot about um, access to services, right? People want to be close to what they need to live a high quality of life. So that could be a potential value is that we want to ensure that no matter where you live in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas, you have the opportunity to live a thriving life by being close to what is important to you and what you need to live that life. So what I would like us to do is now that you've seen all the cards, right? You've seen all the different hashtags that people came up with. Let's see if there are any common value themes that we can pull out. So not necessarily topical, right? Infrastructure is topical, but what's our value about infrastructure, right? Do we want safe, accessible infrastructure as kind of a, uh, um, as an outcome or what's our value? Our value is that we should be building safe, responsible art of infrastructure that can serve not just this generation, but generations to come or any other thing. So there's a lot of ways that we can kind of wordsmith it. And I don't want us to get caught on the words, but more on the concept. So based on what you've heard today and what you've seen in the cards, are there any value terms that you can think of that really resonate with you, that make sense in the context of all of these different topics and priorities and the subject areas of are um, confident. Yes. Repair. Repair. Because what we can't do to be sustainable is the Yes. <clears throat> yes. And, 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 you know, repair has a lot of layers of potential, right? It's not just the physical environment, but some of the social fabric in our community. I think we have a lot of work to do to reconcile trust in local government, uh, trust in build and, and capacity in neighborhoods, right? There's a lot that we can do with that. So I think that's a really, really interesting um, starting point. Responsibilities. Responsibilities. So taking ownership over things or in general. G being responsible about its actions and how it engages the community. Yeah, environmental responsibility. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and so do you see that purely as UG, or is that broader? Whose responsibility are we talking about? I think based on what I've heard, right? We've talked about being kind to each other. That was a hashtag in our group. Mm -hmm. um, Engaging like with our youth, cleaning up trash in our neighborhoods, right? There's this shared responsibility that maybe we've lost because yeah. maybe our trust has been hindered, right? So is that a value that we want to pursue again? I think responsibility and respect kind of are, yeah, they reflect similar things on there. Because um, like responsibility, let's just 
litter is easy. Responsibility, okay, whose responsibility is it to pick this up, but also respect for your environment, respect for your neighborhood. Yeah. Um, by not by not throwing those things out or helping solve the problem. Yep. So I think those two words can kind of go hand in hand. Awesome. So we've got repair rather than replace, responsibility as two kind of starting points. What other kind of core themes or values have you been hearing? Yes. Cut all these trees down and these take neighborhood, mm -hmm. make it look very presentable. So, you, so having a kind of a, a, a beautiful place to live, right? Home. We can all aspire to living yeah. in a neighborhood we're proud of and a community that we're proud of. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's really important. I live here on Saturday, but love where you live would be a great. Love where you live, yes. It's a great yes. Yes, because there is a lot of community pride here, but I think there is more that we can do to bring that together and really direct it towards the positive things we all want to accomplish as neighbors. Awesome. What other themes or values are you carrying in here? I think access is one that I've heard quite a bit, mm -hmm. whether it's a 15 minute city, you can do everything you want within 15 minutes, whether it's safe streets and transportation, um, but access to opportunity is really important. We we know from our GoDot mobility strategy, we export our workforce to the rest of the Metro most days, right? And import people into our, our county to work here. That is a very kind of unnecessary movement of people when people may want to live and work nearby. Um, so maybe there are more, more things that we can do to build up a community that allows people to have access to jobs and education and healthcare within their own neighborhoods. Ashley? I think yes. another good one would be action. Action. Um, okay, excellent. Actually knowing what would be the first necessary step, the first important things we need to pay attention to and kind of implement them. I think that's very interesting, Ashley, because I think what you're saying, too, is we want a plan that doesn't just talk us about this big, grandiose vision, but helps us feel like it's going to be real and helps us understand how to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good thing. I think we've, we've eroded some trust in the past by promising big ideas, big, big, big picture um, visions, but not necessarily being in a position to deliver on them, either because we haven't done enough to really align our resources to get to that vision, or we've just had so much change in vision along the way that sometimes we've lost sight of what we were working towards. Brandy. Building on that education, educating ourselves on what we did wrong in the past so we don't do it again, and then educating the public on what we intend to do. And, okay, so is education a value or is it kind of a way to accomplish that? It's like, are we want, do we want to make sure people are aware or have an understanding? You know what I mean? Is, there, is, there, is it education that we value? I think we want them to be engaged. engaged. Everybody to be engaged. So is there something? We can't do this on our own. It's deeper than that. Deeper than that. Deeper than that. It's deeper than that. These, these kids, we, we need to message yeah. however you do it that we need to prepare our next generation for these in-demand jobs. Yeah. It has to be, it has to be, I don't know if it's all STEM mm -hmm. or if it's, if it's cool, uh, you're talking about construction trade, yeah. but our youth through school first and education, whether it's a young learner or adult learner, yeah. need to be trained yeah. for future jobs. Yeah. So I think that's something where, it, and that works on a lot of levels, right? Like with. For example, Todd, aging neighborhood leaders, right? As folks age out of the community, inevitably that will happen. What's the next generation of neighborhood leaders and organizers, right? Who are the folks that are coming up in the system to help us with the realization of that? So I think that's a really important thing. You know, that taps into this capacity thing that we've been talking a lot about. So we got to figure out a really good way to capture that. Sustainability, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a big one. That was a big one. And I think not just green sustainability, right? Financial sustainability, social sustainability. Yes, I think to um, bring the community to love and better for the youth, I think that there needs to get some more better up-to-date recreational centers yeah, yeah. that they can go to after school yeah. to get down this climb. Yeah. And that way, when they really be bored at home, mm -hmm. they can tell their mom, mom, I'm going to go down to the recreation center yeah. play ping pong or something. Yeah. You know, have something be conservative to them yeah. and won't make them 
Yeah, no, I think, and you know, I think we've heard quite a bit about the importance of focusing on our youth in this community more than ever. I think people understanding, you know, whether it's modern technology that isolates us in a very different way, whether it, you know, uh, you know things like fentanyl and other things are a huge crisis in our own community as it is nationwide. You know, these are massive things that are affecting the next generation. So I think that youth-centered approach, I think maybe there is a value that we extract around that about building a community that is multi-generational but really anticipates this mm -hmm. next generation. That be like, 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 like mm -hmm. youth, youth engagement, would that be? Yeah, I think that would fall under something like this. Like it's, it's, it's that capacity, it's, you know, but also creating places where our kids are here now, but then they want to come back and raise their kids too, you know? Oh, awesome. What else? I think a big one from Saturday that caused a lot of discussion was like making sure we put equity and justice in our place. Yes. Like they could have talked forever about yes. that. Yeah. Good discussion. But yeah. probably make sure that like the things that we're hitting are benefiting people that have not benefited the most. Yeah. And leveling out the play. I love that. You know, one of the things that when we were first trying to do some of the ARPA work, we talked about is we don't have an official recognized uh, definition of equity as an organization. And that's hugely problematic because how do we measure our improvements or our inability to improve on certain things if we're not tracking it, right? So we need to define what we mean as an organization by equity. And I think having that articulated as a value in our comp plan could be a really interesting opportunity to kind of push that conversation forward. What else? Go for it, Nina. <laughs> Prevention versus reaction, like making sure we're doing things in the front end. Yeah. And the, back. the thing that's like coming to mind is when we're talking about um, called proactive too. Proactive, yeah. The yeah. green team making the yeah. historical mm -hmm. sense, like, well, how are we going to manage that? And so they already have plans, like, on yes. the make sure that it doesn't. Yep. Yep. So they're proactive and sustainable, right? They're thinking about how can we be ahead of the curve and ready and anticipate this, but we're also building the <laughs> mechanisms to support the work we're doing in the future. I don't know where this sits in, in values, but I feel like for generations, this community has sort of uh, isolated itself mm. from the rest of the region mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see some of the physical manifestations of that as our bridges literally fall apart mm. and, and further isolate this community geographically. <clears throat> Um, so I don't know, I feel like we have to do something in order to take a leadership position in our region so that all these, I'll just use nonprofits as an example. Mm -hmm. Every nonprofit I talk to says, oh, I'd love to do more work in Kansas City, Kansas. Oh, I just, we have programs, we just don't, we do them all in Kansas City, Missouri, we don't do them in Kansas City, Kansas. I'd love to be more engaged and come over and do this, that, and the other. And I just kept thinking, what is preventing you from doing that? Yeah. And I think it's our engagement in the region because we are a part of it. I think there's a lot of people, myself included, who have a mental black hole in Wyandotte County when they think about their map of Kansas City. That's really interesting. And I don't know what that is, but there's something there where I think we have the unique opportunity to take a leadership position in this region. Excellent. I think we have to figure out what, there's a bit of connectivity in there. There's a bit of leadership. Um, there's also, I think, uh, um, making our presence known. I think having a clear understanding of who we are or what we are, right? Yeah, telling our story. I think those are all really helpful. Any other thoughts around values or? Well, one thing what you talked about, what yeah. you were talking about, April, it, I mean, through the Biden-Harris administration, and I'm on conference calls all week, we, we it's back to the message. Yeah. The equity right now has to come around this digital, equity yeah. access yeah mm -hmm. and the broadband because yes. uh i think uh senator moran said i think in kansas the state of kansas i think 42 percent is rural yeah so you have the same issues going on in rural that you have in the urban yeah. core yeah. but as i'm listening not in judgment i'm like to your point i'm like why didn't why not kind of get draft money the digital equity is millions and millions yes. and millions and millions of dollars yeah. for use yeah. around that getting them ready yeah. young adults older americans and in our meetings i haven't heard that but if i go five minutes across from kansas city missouri mark yeah. where me and mr king went there 
Everybody in Missouri yeah. is talking about that. Absolutely. And so we TCK have to was first that. with Google Fiber with Google Fiber, HTML, yeah. right? What happened to that momentum? What yeah, happened right. to closing the digital? Yeah. What about the sense of urgency during the pandemic when all of a sudden all of our kids were home yeah. needing to have good internet yeah. access yeah. and didn't have yeah. that option, right? This we know this is a huge issue. This is this is where we get competitive economically. This is where we create access opportunity. We also help connect people to resources they may not have. Telemedicine is a great example. You can avoid that trip to the to the doctor's office from the luxury of your home when you may not be able to make that trip, right? That's something that we can yeah. really start to think about. We have a digital equity. I mean, we have that. nothing around that, and I think that is a huge, really interesting opportunity. And you That's know, a since misstep. it's a misstep, mm -hmm. and and certainly we have a lot of infrastructure that we could take advantage of. Chattanooga is a great example. Their utility actually implemented their broadband. Very interesting example, but it's because of the understanding this is critical infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot within that narrative that we need to unpack. Yes. Uh, you know, I call up up, up, up town, me and um, Mayor Gordner and the commissioners that's up there. I'm not dealing with them right now. <laughs> so I go to say, and I'm glad that my cousin invited me to this because we do need to know about our community. Yeah. Uh, I said, if I ever got any rich, <laughs> that I would definitely want to put two homeless buildings mm -hmm. in this community. They're working yeah. on that yeah. now. That's a really now. Mm -hmm. You know, we need a, a male and a female homeless. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in this community, it's there are so many homelessness out here mm -hmm. sleeping behind the film station, yep. in front of the liquor stores. It just don't look nice. When people come in from out of town and see that, they're like, mm. you know, Kansas is a good, you know, community to come and visit at. Yeah. You know, the cheese go cheese, you know. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, why is it that our community have to look like this? Exactly. I don't see that. It may be going on in jail or open or whatever. It is. But it is. Mm -hmm. But I don't see it yeah. out in Oakland. Yeah. They may be here. Yeah. But that community's out there, they're so clean and neat. Yeah. And I love that. And yeah. I'm like, when can our community? Exactly. Like that? They're getting all this money up in the UA, yeah. like BPU and all that. And what is, where is the money going? Other than to the boat. You know, I, I, I'm not going to answer that question per se, but I do problem. think, I do think what you're talking, so there's a couple things. One is, the number one issue in our community survey year over year is street condition and sidewalks, right? Number one infrastructure, that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. The number two issue, but one of the highest kind of return on investment is reducing blight. If we can eliminate garbage and make our neighborhoods cleaner, that would actually improve community satisfaction mm -hmm. exponentially. Mm -hmm. And it'd be much more affordable than trying to fix all the infrastructure. Products. We've got to still fix those. But it goes to show that we need a very intentional strategy around this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen some efforts along the way to try to do something. They, they have not sustained. So they have failed, essentially. We can learn from them and we can move forward. But I can assure you that there are conversations trying to be had at the UG, but I think what we are recognize is we need it to be bigger about how do we address the kind of neighborhood conditions so you guys all feel like your neighborhood is you know, a proud place to be, to your point, love your home. Right? Don't you need to go beyond, go to Topeka, to the secretary of I mean, uh, oh, the governor of this community, or there's I mean, that, there's a that, bunch of ways that we could certainly. Yeah. There's a lot of different kind of approaches to doing this. I think there was an, an initiative several years ago called SOAR, mm -hmm. but with transition and leadership changes, that mm -hmm. kind of went away. So we have a lot of really good learnings from that, but we don't have a really strong mechanism in house mm -hmm. to be responsive. We also have a staffing issue, right? When we only have a couple of people who do all code enforcement mm -hmm. across the entire community. We're, we we would need to have a different relationship with our community. We need a better 311 app. Amen. We need things that can actually help us report and track yes. this information. So there is a lot in there. I don't know if the comp plan necessarily solves it, but makes it a priority. And I think what we hope to see is then through the dot talks in our budget engagement, that's where we need to start pushing for, we need to invest in programs that are actually going to move the needle um, move right the needle, yeah. and consistently and focus Amen. on the areas of greatest need Amen. just as an example if i may yeah. um, how much of our budget goes to public safety 
Oh, it's like over 40% or something. Has anybody said safety today? <laughs> Yeah. It may be it may be 60 if it, yeah if you look at the we so, spend a disproportionate amount because of our geography, we spend a lot more per person on public safety in our community because officers have to carry a much bigger geography, right? So we have to have more coverage. So it we spend a lot more in our budget proportionally on public safety than most communities, which introduces a whole series of questions, right? Are, when we increase our budget for public safety, are we increasing it for personnel or are we increasing it for other things that contribute to safety issues in our neighborhoods, right? That's something that we need to talk about in our budget process. Right. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm simply saying the comprehensive plan is an opportunity for us to reframe what our priorities are so that the community directs its elected officials and then thereby its chief administrative officer to operationalize those priorities, right? Yeah. That's what, quite frankly, I don't think has ever happened with our long range planning process, which is why plans sit on shelves, mm -hmm. don't get implemented, which is why That's communities why the community, don't, yeah. don't create, a, they, we don't have a cycle of accountability to hold us to these, these plans, which are technically the policy of our government, mm -hmm. um, voted on by all of our elected officials, right? So I think that this is our chance to restructure how the whole thing moves forward mm -hmm. right we have a new cao we have a new mayor um we are for the first time ever having a converse this conversation i know we've had a lot of previous conversations but they've never it, it appears to me have been operationalized the problem with that is that means there's a lot of low-hanging fruit we have okay. to we have to walk into them at the same time mm -hmm. we got to figure out how to fix all these structural deficiencies to make the whole organization provide public services better and yeah. more efficiently. Right. And unfortunately, that takes time, right? Like mm -hmm. that takes resources, that takes dedication, that takes um, yep. consistent leadership. Consistent leadership. Yeah. And that's um <clears throat> as much as we want to solve all the problems that are in existence today, we have to have a conversation about which ones are going to do the most for us at the beginning, right? That those strategic initiatives that action, action right to ashley's point yeah. action being really important that address many things at one time and then eventually we get to <clears throat> these finer grained issues but yeah. there's just so much structural things that as staff we are trying to fix on the back end and on the inside that nobody ever sees mm. um which is part of the reason why it's so We're difficult here. It's a bit of a hot mess, but we're working on it together. You know, you I mean, to, the government is being reimagined. I mean, you want to just I'm trying to just say it's a hot mess. <laughs> no, it is. It's true. Then, then, then sugar coat. No. Yeah. And Gunnar, you've always been. You come to our neighborhood meetings, and you're always honest and forthright with us and what's going on. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that as a as a KCK person. It's not all. This is great. No, it's mm -hmm. going to be perfect. No. We're going to all walk hand in hand down the road and sing it. <laughs> yeah. Not, the Not with my flaming hand. <laughs> no, but I agree. And I think that's what we're really, we want to be honest with you because, you know, I've only been with the UG for two years. I, in the two years, have seen the years and years of mistrust and eroded relationships as a result of that. And as someone who cares about community, Community, building those bridges is, is something that, I, I, that really matters to me, right? That's what I, that's why I'm passionate. Where we're working has to adapt. We are just introducing technologies that are getting us into the 21st century to help us move to the digital divide question. We don't even have content online to find us, much less be available to people to get online to find that information, right? So there's a lot of very foundational things that we need to continue to work on while we design this vision. And then I think what we'll see is as we get into next year's budget cycle, this now can be the guideposts, right? For next year's budget discussion. We don't have that really right now. And I think that's a huge opportunity for us to start holding ourselves more accountable to what the community wants to see. I, I am like in seeing how our streets are looking now. They God. are right in them. Good. Uh, down there by Douglas School. Yeah. Uh, it does look really good. I wrote yeah, the Girl really Street not too long ago. Like, oh, look at why not chemistry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, you know. And I feel that if they're if they can do that, get these pot off the floor, 
that's tearing up my cars, uh, they can mm -hmm. yep. continue doing other little things. Absolutely. You know, that can make the uh, community look beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I know you've been waiting, Callie. Oh, I, yeah. I just want to take you back a little bit on what Gunnar said and what is safety. There's a perception of safety mm -hmm. versus actual safety. Yep. <laughs> and so what gives people a feeling of being secure in their neighborhood? Because we can walk down a street with statistically no crime, but there would be litter everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's trash, there's potholes, there's broken street lights. There might be someone sleeping in the corner. Yeah, yep. graffiti. Yeah, right. And, and I mean, technically graffiti is a crime, but if you, if you're looking at all those things there, you're not going to feel safe, even though there's technically no crime happening. Yep. And so I, I feel like maybe we disproportionately sometimes just throw everything at police enforcement without realizing how the perception of safety mm -hmm. in our communities is different from actual safety. Yeah. Right. And also thinking about why do people care to be safe? Mm -hmm. It goes back to some of the respect things, right? Like people stop respecting when they see their neighbors aren't respecting mm -hmm. and then that snow piles on each other. And then that feeling of safety erodes is part of that disrespect yeah. that's going on. Yeah. And so that buy-in to the trash, the public improvements yeah. and stuff like that yeah. is going to maybe <clears throat> increase our perceptions of a safe community. Yeah. You walk through Johnson County or some of these mm -hmm. other neighborhoods you've looked at mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, it feels safe here. But why does it feel safe? Mm -hmm. Is it feel safe because people's lawns are trimmed and there's no garbage? Because there's actually crime happening there. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. there is here. Cars are getting stolen and people's houses are still being broken into. But we still think of them as relatively more safe than here, mm -hmm. even though that might not be true, simply because of the perception yep. of safety. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And we will be moving our community yeah. survey to moving to questions asking about perceptions of safety. Because yeah. frankly, if you haven't called 911 in a year, how do you know what the response time is? And why does that matter? How about I feel confident that if I call 911, someone's coming, right? That's more important than, you know, did you actually call 911 in the last year, right? So I think that's a, I think that's a really good point. Jason, and then I know um, Alyssa needs to wrap up the conversation, but go for it. Just a quick tie-in of the last two speakers. Uh, we did have a comment wanting to add to the red list under our equity and finance to actually specify uh, utility prices and taxes. Awesome. So there's also, an affordability yeah, component in there, too. Taxes, yes. um, that's, that's something that is a buzzword or the common concept for everyone. And the way that that kind of relates to the perception of received value for services yes. from the government is that I mean, you, you see the bill every month. You see yep. the bill for what you're paying for yep. services, but then you don't uh, correlate that with the actual um, appreciation of what services are available because you know hopefully you're never in a situation where you have to call the police or the fire department right but you want to know that if you do they'll arrive um and not because they're underfunded and unavailable to all the things that we always hear about but then it also goes to the streets not being repaired neighbors not having a sidewalk it taking six years for them to put a median down state avenue you know heading out to the legend shopping area um and you know still ongoing progress of putting sidewalks along the Leavenworth road because they never existed before yeah and so the the uh, recognizing that that value that you're paying for yeah and then being able to agree to that payment instead of it being frustration of you know uh, as the someone was saying the appraisal office sent out there noticing hey the market rates for everything have gone up 20 percent so so have your house valuations yeah mm -hmm. and as a resident you just see that as that just corresponds to higher taxes yes um and then it re revises the question again of, of what are my taxes going towards yeah and, and no. stay tuned the dot talks which are will give us all information on that that are, those are our budget engagement conversations because things like revenue neutral and other things are conversations coming up very quickly but i do think that value for services and being able to say not only do I love living here, but I understand what I'm getting out of the dollars that I pay into this community, I think is something that we've struggled with in a lot of ways. And I think that's something that we can certainly kind of figure out how do we constitute that as a value. I'm gonna turn it back to you because I know we're kind of, I kind of took over this a little bit. I think you've given us a lot of really good starting points. What I think we'll need to do is do a little bit of wordsmithing, as much fun as that is by committee. We're going to try to come back to you with some ideas and you guys can help us continue to vet this. There is a vision summit coming up where they're continuing to build on this, uh, what these values are. So I think there's a lot of uh, 
really good content that we've gotten out of Yes, it. and I will say too, we will email, everyone who attends will get an email where they can have access to the notes from this. Um, also, I wrote about our website here specifically for the comp plan because you can find all of the notes on there. You will also be able to find all of the events that Ashley was mentioning on there, including these pizza and planning. So it's just ycocasek.org forward slash plan KCK. Um, so that way we'll try to be constantly communicating with you and, and you know being able to have access to these things if you're, if you're not able to make a meeting. But I did want to just catch you in the last five minutes that we had because we do have some um, upcoming meetings that we wanted to invite you to and also get your feedback on. So next week on um, Tuesday, there's another pizza and planning meeting, same time, same place. Um, we uh, would like to use that meeting to have our economic development consultant come in and do a dry run of some of what they're going to do for our vision summit on the 16th, which again, you know, you can register for that event here. Um, but we want to make sure that when we're bringing in these consultants and they're going through all this data and then they're talking to the public that one, it makes sense. And two, that it's relevant to what we need at our communities. So you guys would kind of be the beta testers for that, if that's okay with you. <laughs> that's what we're thinking for next week. I don't know if anyone has any quick comments or thoughts about that. We want harsh feedback, right? Yeah. If they say something wonky that nobody understands, we need to hear that they may need to hear that too. So yes, it's important for us that you guys give us a chance to kind of test this concept out. Yes, exactly. Um, so that's the plan for next Tuesday's pizza and planning. And then the following Tuesday on the 16th is actually when the Vision Summit is. So that's going to be Wyandotte County Lake at James Calibas Hall from nine to one. We invite you to come um, share the registration with other folks. Um, so then you can kind of see in action. We're hoping to have a good crowd. Um, and then the last pizza and planning meeting that we have for May is on the 23rd. And what we're thinking is um, doing kind of a communications workshop. So I think there's um, a lot of public meetings that are boring um, and maybe not uh, very effective at communicating what the actual goal is of the meeting. Um, even in our first pizza and planning meeting last week, you know, we had people saying like, public meetings aren't fun, they're boring. Like, I don't wanna sit there and listen to a presentation, right? So we have to figure out how to better communicate with everyone, right? And there's lots of different scenarios in which you might have to adjust that. So what we're thinking is kind of to bring someone in and talk about how we can do that better. And that hopefully will change the whole rest of the comprehensive plan process and hopefully start to, um, I guess, you know, uh, influence just how we, talk to you guys in general so yeah, of course i had on the counter we have the 30th too okay so there may be another one on the 30th we haven't gotten that far yet yeah, we haven't gotten that far yet mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I, i'm just kind of what departments are you guys with yeah that's a great question <laughs> together um so no and that's kind of one of the points so i'm from planning we have Gunner from planning. We have Sarah from public works. County Ashley, administration. County administration. We have Louisville neighborhoods. Um, who else is here? Planning. More planning. More planning. Right. So basically, this is a group effort because one of the things is we're not only trying to align with the community better, we're trying to align internally better within the UD, right? There's a lot of issues that don't function in silos. Just because you say economic development doesn't mean it doesn't affect housing or food systems yeah. or transportation or all of those things, right? So I don't know if you want to add to that. But. No, I was just saying maybe you can explain a little bit how planning, uh, the, the planning group is a leader of this type of activity. Yeah, right? sure. It's I mean, it's like the role of, of a partner. Yeah. And why you see why you see you guys leading this charge? Yeah, I mean it, it's a partnership, but planning is leading because it's a planning activity, right? And we're doing the engagement, but we're working with all of these other departments because everything that we do should impact what they do too, right? If the community is telling us that they want to see good sidewalks everywhere, then public works mm -hmm. needs to know that, right? So I guess we're the facilitators of the conversation, really. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay. So will you guys be responsible for planning the development of downtown? 
Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> well here's, here's an yeah. easy way to think about it. So you've got these are. professionals who are listening. They are they are well equipped to listen, take it all in, mm -hmm. and put it into a space that manifests like what you guys want out there. Right. Then that document is then gone through the process of being adopted right mm -hmm. and then that kind of is like the rule book it's the game book mm -hmm. then everybody else plays to for that specific space <laughs> so this particular um process is about our comp plan which is our community-wide comp plan then maybe there's like a downtown plan yeah. a northeast plan right. an armordale plan but those are the playbooks if you will where Developers come to the table, public works comes to the table, housing comes to the table and says, okay, now how do we make this? How do we how do we play this game? So how do you so with this meeting, we can uh, also put in if we want the light to get up, like a little like a theater up on the avenue again, like we have in the past. We had two of them. Uh, so sort of like so this is comprehensive. So it's like this is more of the umbrella. What Sarah's saying is when you get to a specific neighborhood there's a specific planning process, right? If the goal is from a comprehensive plan level, we want more arts and theater back in our community. That's mm -hmm. your comprehensive plan goal. And then whatever neighborhood you live in, I forgot which neighborhood you said, in that in that neighborhood, in that plan, that's where you start to look at where in the neighborhood do we want our, you know, to improve our arts and theaters. So I'm in the Clam Party area. Okay. Uh, now I was told that you somebody was, the government was gonna knock down and bring a bridge up in, and I mean, that's what I was told now. That would be nice. They can take my house. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how true it is, but I was told that later on, they're going to go from 18 and come on around up in there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, good. You know, okay. let's do it. If that's going to happen. Yeah. I don't know what year is coming, but I, I don't know. I, it would be nice. I think they're adding a trail at Clam Park. Yeah. In the park. In, in the park. The Heritage Trail, one of the potential routes would go by Clam Park, but no one's talking about taking anyone's property for any infrastructure at the U.S. Other than that area, they No. We would use existing right away to do any trails. I, again, I think the vision, the thing is, we've never had a comprehensive plan before in this community. We never identified what we're working towards mm -hmm. as uh, neighbors, as UG staff, as mm -hmm. partner That's agencies, right. whoever, right? Like we've never had a conversation about what our North Star is. And I understand that can be frustrating because we want to do something on my block. That's what I want. Right. So we have to take a, a you know, I mentioned walking and chewing gum. We have to figure out a way to, to take that step back. Um, assess everything that's happened. You know, when we did this with Armordale, it was actually quite powerful to recognize the environmental racism that's mm -hmm. been happening in Armordale for <laughs> plus years. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, I think, truth allows us to start, restart and work towards um, that vision in a, in a more collective sort of uh, <laughs> togetherness, right? And so I think that's the exercise we're doing right now on a countywide level. How do we all come together and recognize yeah. those structural inefficiencies, acknowledge mm -hmm. them, and find ways Give to move voices. forward? Yeah. So we have a big vision, and in mm -hmm. each neighborhood, you're in the northeast area mm -hmm. plan has its own neighborhood. So as as Alyssa was mentioning, if we can identify the north stars and all these different topics and find strategic initiatives, when we get to the area planning stage, we look to that to say, okay, what does that mean for this specific neighborhood? Okay. What does that mean for that specific block? Okay. Um, and the Northeast Area Plan was adopted in 26. I didn't even know Clam Park was a, a, a graveyard back in <laughs> Yeah, it's a, uh, well, it's on that creek bed, right? So there's a, they actually found a bunch of um, old uh, Native American um, graveyard. Uh, uh, well, I mean, there's like there's the graveyard period, but there's I mean, it goes much farther back than that. There's like, really? yeah, there's like yeah, old settlements. There's all kinds of. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about ten thousand year old Native American settlements mm -hmm. um, on Jersey Creek, right? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, and again, I I understand that that can be very hard for folks to have a relatively. <clears throat> You know, pie in the sky conversation yes, when there are real needs immediate that I needed answers to yesterday. Yes. Um, so, but we have to have that vision in order to identify what that <laughs> means for each plan. neighborhood, then to develop the strategies by which to implement them. The great thing about a vision plan and the process we're going in uh, right now is, again, it's our opportunity to reframe the whole thing. If you're an elected official, this is what I keep telling them is, 
this plan will live on past your term limit. Mm -hmm. So if you want to codify the thing that you've been talking about, this is the place to have those conversations Amen. and get those That's locked down and then move forward. <laughs> but just as equally, what hasn't been happening as we develop these long range plans in our community, be it this plan or an area plan or otherwise, on the back end, we haven't held our own selves accountable to it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't asked our community to hold our elected officials accountable to that or to mm -hmm. that policy that they adopt, right? We just sort of let it go. And then planning is the person going, well, that's not in the plan. And everybody thinks we're just, you know, the squeaky wheel inside the unified <laughs> government, making it hard for everybody to do what they were, what they were trying to do. Well, is so that the commissioner? I mean, the commissioner stops a lot of stuff, I was told, in the community. Is that true that you got to go through them for them to manifest a lot of this stuff that we're asking for? I mean, they're a resource to help connect you with UG services. That's that's one of their roles. They do they do vote on certain things, be they developments or others that require uh, certain permissions to go forward. But generally speaking, they set the budget and then the staff works through it. But setting the budget. Everybody, like we talked about, I'm sorry, we're going way over now, but uh, everybody complains about how, uh, well, um, we have all this, uh, these code violations and we need to clean up our properties, this, that, and the other. And then when it comes to the budget conversation, we have two zoning enforcement officers for 60,000 parcels in Wyandotte County, right? We have probably a dozen or so code enforcement officers in charge with everything, every broken window, weed or whatnot in the entire county. It's untenable, right? There's just, there's no equitable way to do any of that work with that limited amount of resources. So if we keep ourselves in the, what the board of commissioners do control, the budget. So if the development process, getting new developments in our community are as important, if making sure that those developments in our communities are clean, then the resources need to reflect that and they have not reflected that previously. Those are tough conversations, guys, because it's a constrained community with not a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but it's also not a lot of money. I think like that goes back to diversity and development, too. You know, I think right now a lot of people feel the burden because it's on homeowners, because that's predominantly our economic generators, right? That's the revenue makers. So getting out and thinking about that economic diversity to alleviate some of that are spread it around appropriately. It could be a strategy, could be a value, could be something, you know, but that's what this process has the opportunity to define. Uh, I just heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but the, the Nebraska furniture market that building was like on the tax sale list not too long ago. Is that true? No, no, there was, I think, no, that's not true. I think what you, you may be referring to is Nebraska furniture mark um, sued the state and the UG was party to that suit. It was settled about a year ago where we had to return about $2 million of tax revenue because they, they won a court case that we were double taxed. So that's the only thing tax related to that firm. Oh. Um, oh, okay. um, that was part of the incentives they got as part of the star bonds, which are state incentives. And, there's, and, and that's another thing. I, I know you guys are, are over, but what he was talking about affordability. Uh -huh. I'm the president of a neighborhood group, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, the, the homeowners in my subdivision are elderly folks. Mm -hmm. You know, they had their house paid for, and they, then they go out and and refinance the house to get some things fixed. Mm -hmm. And then, in one particular incident, this elderly lady, she's a widow, and she calls me and she says, "Hey, you know, I just got my tax appraisal, and you know, I'm on a fixed income. My taxes is going up every year." She said, "I just she, she's looking for advice on what she should do yeah. to be able to." Just, Stay in her house, basically, and I just, you, you know, I just kind of threw my hands. Up. I don't know exactly what to tell, them, but the affordability again. Yeah. You know, a lot of folks in this community feel that they can't afford to live here. Right. It'll be yeah. better to go to Johnson County or Leavenworth or anywhere. And then when you see the unified government taking back services, like mm -hmm. for instance, the the trash pickup. It used to be a, a Operation Brightside connected with the Neighborhood Resource mm -hmm. Center where they go out and pick up trash and stuff just every so often, not all the time. But uh, it was a big help for neighbors. Mm -hmm. But now you got this uh, recycle center out here 
And if you're lucky enough to have a truck, you know, you can get your stuff out there. But it's, there's a lot of citizens that don't have access to a truck or can't pay somebody with access to a truck to come get this stuff and haul it, which is, I think, is leading to illegal dumping. Yeah. You know, people don't have somewhere to take that stuff. Yeah. You know, they just dump it or leave it wherever it is, mm -hmm. and that contributes to the to the blight. The so that's just a question about where the funds get allocated to. Those services are great, and we can reinstate doing stuff like that. But the budget's not there to to bring back the staffing, to bring back the vehicles, to bring back all that. The and budget that, just isn't there. And that's what I hear all the time: is is, is due to staffing. We we short on staffing, and then I'm I'm, I'm thinking that okay, if we we receiving less service, but we paying more taxes. That that don't seem right to me. That's not right. So, um, to conclude, just something to think about. Right? <laughs> and again, I, and again, I think that yeah, it's one of the reasons why I think they want to pivot and in June direct all of our engagement into the budget process. Right. It's a really important part of not just the comprehensive plan process, but the community that, as, uh, the communities uh, in general, right? Like, not to mention that it's delayed and therefore and thereby truncated, right? It usually takes three or four months to go through the budget process. We're going to do it in two over the summer. And we still have the same deadline, right? So it's going to be a hyper active budget period. And I think that's part of the strategy that we're trying to think about. We don't want to, uh, well, we want to do two things. We think that Vision Summit is an opportunity to have a conversation about North Stars before we engage in a budget process, which I think would be helpful. But then on top of that, um, we don't want to add more during the budget process to more confuse engagement. We're just trying to. We're trying to align internally as, as we've been talking about, right? So there's there's a couple of benefits there. But to your to your point, I, again, I think we need to talk about affordability. We need to define affordability in our community. That is a comprehensive plan discussion that I think is uh, important. I think we need to demystify the difference between gentrification and displacement in our community. Gentrification is a natural process. Displacement is the problem um, that we need to address before it becomes something we can no longer control because. At some point, the market will take over and we won't have anything we can do about it. Mm -hmm. Again, because we have such limited resources, there are plenty of ideas, programs, and other things that we could look to any other city in this region, in these, in these, in our two uh, adjacent states or in the country. But if we don't have the wherewithal and the resources to implement those programs, we can't do anything about this. I want to. The policy says we should, but we have to create those programs. Let me conclude my point. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the, 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 a lot of the things that we're discussing um, and the point was, was about planning and what, what this department was made up about. In the last meeting, I think on Saturday, yep. we had the mayor and the commissioner there. Right. I think a lot of the things that we're talking about would be better preserved for one of those guys or someone from the area a commissioner to be at these meetings is it a real this is a real meeting when you talk about mm -hmm. elderly people and you talk about economic <laughs> development and you guys got the burden of all this why don't we have this and all this and i want my neighborhood to have this but i think that you know uh, uh, uh miss bynum was there i think mr bynum and uh and mayor gardner was there and so a lot of that didn't get addressed to them. We should, we should at least, you know, because then we don't have two minutes. You know, you get up there, you have two minutes to speak. Well, this is in their area. This is real talk. Absolutely. Real and we discussion. do have a representative of the mayor's office here as well. So, yeah. um, uh, well, and I was talking about the commissioner. Yeah. Um, yep. so, you know, someone who ran on the agenda. Mm -hmm. See, so we're talking about agendas that they ran on, the mayor ran on right. an agenda, and we like to know. I mean, this is this is what this is about. Sure. Is, sure. Uh, well, because what we're seeing is an unhealthy political environment. Yeah. We're seeing uh, yeah. the mayor and the commissioner fight each other. The mayor had an agenda. They had an agenda. Yeah. We have an agenda here. So I think that um, we need I'm, to share the agenda. We need to share the agenda. So I think I think that. That hopefully at the next meeting, sure. someone, a commissioner, we can definitely make an effort to do that. Yeah, right? we'll be double our efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of shared agendas, too, looping it back to the comp plan, right? This comprehensive plan. This is basically like the, to the topics of that particular agenda. It's coming up with the big topics, not necessarily the, the stuff or the narrative that's in those topics, but it's the big topics that 
we're really honing in on. And then all the other stuff is the little smaller stuff to lean in. So kind of looping it back around, but there we go. Okay, that's just think about it. In 10 years, we'll have a plan with all these area plans where we don't have area plans, and then we'll be in a conversation about renewing these conversations, right? So we just got to get into that cycle. It's tough. We get it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It's great to have you here. Thanks for your feedback. Thanks for staying late. See you next Sorry. week. Sorry. Come on.